Hello guys, Reza here. Welcome to another how to video. In this one, we're going to have a brief look at how to enable opacity inside Adobe Substance Painter. The reason that you would like to have opacity is because you may have transmissive objects, glassy objects, and you would like to make use of it, add roughness on it and export it as a map inside your preferred 3D application. So let's see how we can enable opacity inside Adobe Substance Painter. Cool. I have a scene um, which I have uh, like four or five textures set for it. One of them in particular is called Glass Surface Shader. I brought it from Maya and I already have a material on it. Now, if I go ahead and enable that material, um, there's really not much to it. If I get rid of the dirt, first things first, we have just a solid color with um, almost no roughness and with no height if I look at my channels everything is um, enabled but you can totally disable height and normal and it's not going to affect anything we've got a sort of a greenish looking color little bit of metalness and low roughness the next layer is basically a grime or dirt layer where I have the base color set to preferably a darker color compared to your glass color and then low metallic uh, a good amount of roughness and that roughness does play a role because if I lower the roughness everything will kind of disappear I don't want to overdo it as well but the magic happens in the filter area where you have a black mask and you insert a filter and the filter for it is basically done by mask editor where it uses curvature and ambient occlusion when you bake your textures to find out where the edges are so it can put all the grime and dirt in there and a good thing about mask editor is you get to have texture one and texture two and you can kind of play around with the level of intensity using your baked map so baking maps before you having any a glassy object or if you wish to add grime and dirt to your glassy object having those maps baked is quite important so that's all good and you may say Reza I don't see the problem uh, we do see a reflection and we kind of have glass in there well not actually because what you see is a reflection of the environment it's just a reflective surface it's not a see through surface so it becomes uh, clear where I actually select one of these layers and you can see there is no opacity channel you can play around with color metal roughness so on and so forth but there is no opacity in here you may say well why don't we add that as a channel well if you were to go ahead in your texture set settings and scroll all the way down into channel opacity is not even here so you got to be very careful um, what exactly you would like to do if I go to um, display settings and go to my environment map and bring up the map a little bit bring up the opacity I cannot see the background all I'm looking at is the reflection of what is in front of this reflective surface so this is not a see-through object at the moment now that's the whole purpose behind this tutorial how to add opacity channel how to introduce opacity channel in order to address this issue we need to look into what shader we're using in general via our shader settings now to find the shader setting you need to go on the top right of the screen and we have the shader setting button you click on it and it tells us what 
shader we're using. We're using PBR Metal Roughness, which is a sort of a workflow that we use for this particular scene. We have a roughness workflow and specular or glossiness workflow, so on and so forth, beyond the scope of this tutorial, but that's what we use. And in nature, this does not have an opacity channel built into it. What we should be doing is click on this bar and then go all the way to PBR Metal but with alpha blending and that does the trick for us so as soon as you click on it if i were to go ahead to select my glass texture set and go to texture set settings to access the settings of the selected texture sets and try to add a channel we all of a sudden get opacity and that was missing before and now we have it so if i go ahead and add opacity all of a sudden we get opacity channel that's perfect i can just scroll all the way down to get to opacity and can play around with opacity you can see now it becomes clear that all right we can get a little bit of sort of see through so if there is any object in there um, we can potentially see it. Another benefit of having an opacity map is if you're planning on taking this model into another 3D application like Maya or Blender, then you really need to have a, a roughness map or a sort of a map to kind of break that neat clean look when you assign transmissive material to your object in your preferred application so in my case all of these dirts and grimes will be baked into my opacity map uh, using all the right values so when i assign ai standard shader and a transmissive value to my model inside Maya, then I can transfer all of these maps to that and get the exact same look. Now the way that you do it inside Adobe 3D Substance is by pressing Control, Shift and E and that brings your export textures window. Ideally you would like to use the hotkeys to be quicker but if you want to use main menus you can go to file and i believe export textures are in there again Control shift e and then you get that then you will be getting three tabs the first tab says what texture set you would like to export so if you have not starting the texturing process you would like to get all of them ideally or or if you're in a position where you need to revisit one of your maps, then you ideally want to disable the rest of them and just re-export one texture set. And then you specify the path, and then you specify the output template, which we will get into, it's from this menu. Um, what size, and this size is based on your texture set, but you can increase that. So I baked my texture maps in 2K, you can have that in 4K. So that's that, and then you go and export your maps. Next is output template, where if you're using a very specific render engine, then you can kind of select that and get all the right channels out. For example, um, Arnold AI standard is what I use, but if you're using, let's say, Renderman with Pixar Surface, then that's what you should be picking. We have one for V-Ray, we have one for Unreal Engine, if you would like to export your maps to Unreal or Unity. So it's very thorough. You can create your own custom channel as well and intentionally pick the, the right information out and bake it which I might create a tutorial just on that. And then we have list of export where you sanity check what exactly you will be getting with the current setting. So with the current setting, I would get base color, height, metallic, normal information, opacity and roughness. And you need to think about, do you really need all of that? So if you think that, for example, you really don't need to have the base color, 
then you probably can go to the texture set and you go to layer to the default glass layer and say you know what I'm going to take care of the color information inside my preferred 3d application just don't bring any color and you just focus on the information that you need to export to your preferred 3d application hopefully it makes sense all right that should do the trick for this tutorial i hope you found this tutorial useful and use it in your projects i try to kind of keep it short so you get to the point really quick until the next video see you guys soon